Hello everyone and welcome! Last time we talked about Zed and Shen. You may have noticed that there was a gap in their story. Today we will not only fill that gap, but we will continue the story through Jin. It all began before the events of Kinko Monastery. At the time, Ionia's southern mountains were plagued by the infamous Golden Demon. Throughout the province of Zayun, this demon slaughtered countless of travelers and farmers, leaving nothing but twisted displays of corpses behind. Armed militaries searched the forests, towns hired demon hunters, and Wuju masters patrolled the roads. Yet, no one was able to slow the beast down. In desperation, the Council of Zayun sent its people to beg Great Master Kusho for help. After hearing what the demon was able to do, Kusho made up an excuse why he couldn't help. But one week later, Kusho, his son Shen and his star apprentice Zed disguised themselves as merchants and moved to Zayun. In secret, they visited countless families emotionally shattered by the killings. They witnessed the horrific crime scenes and looked for possible connections and patterns to the murders. Their investigation took four long years and left the three men changed. Kusho's red hair turned white, Shen lost his great sense of humor and Zed began to struggle with his studies. Then Kusho finally found the connections. At the moment it all clicked together, he is quoted as saying, Good and evil are not truths. They are born from man and each sees the shades differently. On the eve of the Blossom Festival in Jion Pass, Kusho disguised himself as a calligrapher to blend in with other guest artists. Then he waited. Everyone had assumed that only an evil spirit could commit these horrific crimes. But Kusho knew it was only an ordinary man. The famous golden demon was just a stagehand in Zayun's traveling theater working under the name Kada Jin. When they captured him, young Zed marched forward, ready to kill Jin where he stood. But Kusho held him back. Despite everything Jin has done, Kusho decided that he would be taken alive and left at Tula prison. Shen disagreed, but he accepted the emotionless logic of his father's judgment. On the other side, Zed, haunted by the murder scenes, was unable to understand or accept this mercy. At that point, something dark began to bloom within him. Throughout the years of imprisonment in Tula, Jin revealed few things about himself, but never his real name. He was polite, shy and an excellent student in many subjects, including smithing, poetry and dance. When Noxus invaded Ionia, the war slowly led to political instability. Right after that, the peace and balance of Kinko Monastery was shattered when the dark powers awoke within the lands. Desperate to counter the powers of ninjas and Vuju swordsmen, one of the Ionian's politicians secretly freed Jin and turned him into a weapon of terror. To make sure Jin would be truly unstoppable, the politician was willing to supply him with tools perfectly suited for his performance. During one of his missions, Jin was getting ready for his main act. He picked up his gun and he wiped it for the fourth time. He couldn't be sure it was clean until he wiped it down exactly four times. It took him some practice to switch from a blade to a gun, but Jin was good at learning new techniques to improve his performance. The gun itself was made by a true forge master using magically enhanced Ionian bronze. It held four shots. Each bullet 
infused with magical energy. Unlike his old blade, the gun was like the finest paintbrush to Jin. It didn't just cut apart the body, it rearranged it. He had finished polishing it, but with the gun in his right hand, the temptation was too great. He knew he shouldn't, but he unpacked his black eel skin bodysuit. The feeling of the skin's oily surface quickened his breath. He picked up his leather mask. Unable to help himself, he slid it over his face. It covered his right eye and mouth. It constricted his breathing and removed his depth perception. He was putting on the shoulder armor when the bells he had hidden on the steps to his room sounded. He quickly folded up the weapon and removed the mask. Hello? The maid asked through the door. You did what I asked? Jin said. Yes, sir. A white lantern every four yards, a red lantern every sixteen. Then I can begin. Jin said as he swung open the door to his room. The woman's eyes widened as he exited his room. Jin was very well aware of how he looked. He walked out with a cane. He was hunched and his cloak seemed to cover some huge deformity on his shoulder. He approached the window and he tapped his fingers rhythmically. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Wha what is that? The maid asked indicating Jin's shoulder. Jin paused for a moment to study the woman's face. It was round and perfectly symmetrical. A dull and predictable design. Removed, it would make a terrible mask. It's for the crescendo, my darling, Jin said. The window had a clear view of the rest of the town in the valley below. It was performance day and there was still so much work to be done. The councilman would be returning this evening, and so far, all of Jin's plans for tonight seemed uninspired. I brought some flowers for your room, the woman said, walking past him. He could have used someone else to place the lanterns, but he didn't. He could have changed clothes before opening the door, but he didn't. Now she had seen Kada Jin in his finery. The inspiration he needed was so obvious, so preordained. There was never a choice, there was no escaping the art. He would have to make this maid's face more interesting. Meanwhile, in an unknown inn, Shen was about to enjoy his bowl of soup. The candle in front of him flickered wrongly and Shen pulled out his blades from under his cloak. Your students are as quiet as a pregnant vorex, Shen said. Alone and dressed like a merchant, Zed entered the inn. He sat down three tables away from Shen. Every part of him wanted to dash at his foe and avenge his father, but such was not the way of Twilight. He calmed down when he realized that the distance was too far but only by the length of Shen's index finger. Shen expected Zed to grin, but instead he sighed. He was visibly wary. Five years I have waited, Shen said. Have I misjudged the distance? Zed asked. Even if my head is cut off, I will still close and strike, Shen said, sliding his foot backwards and cocking it against the floor. Your path's closer to mine. Your father's ideals were weakness. Ionia could no longer afford them, Zed said. I know that's not something I can make you understand, but I will offer you chance for vengeance. I do not act because of vengeance. You defy the balance. For that, you are damned, Shen said as he inched forward to the edge of his chair. The golden demon escaped. Zed replied, Impossible! Your father's greatest victory. And now, again, his foolish mercy has tarnished his legacy. Zed shook his head. You know what that thing is capable of, 
Then, that leaned over the table, well within Shen's range, his neck intentionally exposed. And you know that we are the only two people who can get close enough to stop him. Shen remembered the first time he had seen the body of someone killed by the infamous Kada Jin. He put his blade on the table and looked down at his soup. He was hungry no more. Hours passed and it was performance time. Jin stood at the jetty of the town's harbor. There was a foreign ship behind him that would be leaving in a few moments. He would have to return soon if he was going to perform in Zon next month. He was dressed as an elderly merchant. Because of his years of acting, he could perfectly blend into the crowd up the hill. He checked the white lanterns above him, counting the distance. If that appeared, he would need them. At the inn on top of the hill, Jin had hidden traps. Sharpened steel blades shaped like flowers. They protected his escape route in case anything went wrong. He noticed Shen inside the crowd. Another King Ko, a young woman named Akali, stood beside him. She walked to the doorway of the inn. No, Shen said as he blocked her path. What makes you think I'm not ready? Akali asked, annoyed. Because I wasn't when I was your age. At that moment, a town guard stumbled from the entrance, his face pale and hollow. Her flesh, it was... it was... he said. He took a few steps and then collapsed on the ground in shock. He saw it, he saw the flowers. Against the wall, the tavern's owner laughed. Then he began weeping, his face painted by madness. These were not people that would forget seeing Kadajin's work. Shen scanned the faces of the onlookers. Clever boy, Jin thought, before fading back into the crowd. He checked the rooftops for Zed as he walked back on the ship. The work was inescapable. Together or apart, Zed and Shen would chase the clues he had left. They would follow them back to the Blossom Festival, back to Jeon Pass, and when they become desperate, they would have to work together again. It would be like it had been when they were young. Only then would the great Kada Jin reveal himself, and his true masterpiece would begin. And that is all we know about Jin. It seems like there is going to be more to this story. From what it looks like, Jin is trying to lure both Shen and Zed back to Jeon Pass, where he is planning to kill them. But will it happen? Only time will tell. It is also possible that Riot is hinting an event in Zone since the Jin's escape ship was going there. But for now, if you have enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, there is the subscribe button. And other than that, I hope you have a great day and as always, thank you come again. Don't worry, I know that Tariq has been released on the PBE with his lore and I am definitely going to be working on it by the time you are watching this video. So most likely Tariq is going to be next, unless there is going to be something very crazy happening, but I don't think so. So I'll see you in that video.